I always miss that last step. This place creeps me out. I hate coming down here. What? You mean spending Saturday afternoon hanging out in a smelly basement instead of playing in the park with Moa, your favorite cousin, is not your idea of fun? What's this paint can doing in the middle of the hallway? I'm pretty sure that's a health code violation. It's usually not this bad. So, remind me again while we're here. I told you, I'm on a case. My next door neighbor, Miss Sadie, hired me to find her cat, Bibi. The last time she saw the cat was when she did laundry yesterday. Bibi could have followed her down to the laundry room without her knowing it. If you say... Ah! Frank, what happened? Spiderweb, it was ginormous. Can you check if it's still on me? Okay, hold still. It's too dark for me to see, but maybe I can feel something. Ew, sticky web, sticky web. Get it off, oh! I hate spider webs. Calm down, it's gone. Now can we get back to... Frank, what just happened? I can't see anything. Frank, Frank, where are you? Frank, I can't find my phone. I can't see anything. Frank! Ow, my knee. Frank, now is not the time to play games. Frank, where are you? Please answer me. Who's there? Dude, chill, it's just me. Where were you? You know how I get when it's dark. Were you playing some kind of a joke on me? I wouldn't do that. I went to try and find a light switch. I guess I should have told you, sorry. I know you didn't mean to freak me out. Let's take a quick look around for my phone, then head to the laundry room so we can get out of here. Oops, I think I found your phone. So, Miss Sadie's the neighbor with the serious southern accent and the ponytail, right? The one who gave us those homemade donut thingies that time. They're called beignets. Actually, Bibi's name is short for beignet. Cool. Do you think Miss Sadie might have some more of those beignets lying around? This is not helping, Frank. They were super tasty. I'm just saying. We have to focus, Frank. If I were a lost cat, where would I hide? Here, I'll move some of the stuff out of the way. Frank, stop. If Bibi is down here, you'll scare her with all that noise. Well, excuse say moi. I was just trying to help. Besides, if Bibi isn't here, she probably wouldn't just hide under a chair table out in the open. You're right. She'd look for some place she wouldn't be seen right away. Let me just listen for a minute. Did you hear that? What? That scratching sound. I hear it. Sounds like it's coming from the janitor's closet. What do you think you're gonna do with that box of detergent? I don't know what's behind that door. I gotta protect myself somehow. We've gotta open it. On the count of three, one, two, three! <laughs> ah! Quick, close the door to the laundry room. Got it. Heads up, O. Bibi's heading back towards you. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Darn, I almost had her. Shh, she's over there in the corner. I think we can catch her. Here, maybe you can trap her with this empty laundry basket. Booyah! Gotcha, kitty. We're not gonna hurt you, kitty. We just wanna take you home. Brought you some treats. I'll just slide them under the basket. Okay, Frank, let's lift the basket slowly, slowly. Got it! She always likes it when I scratch behind her ears. See? Now who needs to focus? Case solved. Let's return this cat already. Wait a sec. How did Bibi get in the janitor's closet? Who knows? Maybe she wandered in there when somebody opened the door. But Mr. Gregory, the janitor, always keeps this door locked. Here, hold Bibi. Look! It's the padlock Mr. Gregory usually has on the door. But it's broken, like somebody cut the lock. Maybe whoever cut the lock put Bibi in the closet. But why? That's the question. I need to record a few notes. Ugh, I forgot. My phone is broken. But I do have my trusty notebook and marker. So, why do you use a marker instead of a pen? Markers write a little darker, so they're easier to see. Ugh. 
Oh, I get it. But, but can you hurry up with these notes? This cat is getting pretty fidgety. I think she needs a litter box. Which is not gonna be me. I guess we should get her home. I think she probably heard you. Just making sure. OMG, there's my kitty witty. Oh, Bo, I knew I can count on you to find my sweet baby. Come to Mama Sugar Paws. You had me so worried. Uh, Miss Sadie, I was hoping I could talk to you for a minute. There have been a few interesting twists in the case. I wish I could, Opal Hun, but I'm kind of busy right now. Here, take a few dollars for your trouble. I'm sorry, it's not much. Thanks, but... <sighs> Gotta get going. Thanks again, Opal. Bye now, darlings. That was rude. Maybe she was just busy. She did have on workout clothes. Maybe she was on her way to the gym. Or to the store to buy ingredients to make more beignets. But if someone just found my lost cat, I would make time for them. This is what we detectives call a hostile witness. She seemed pretty nice to me. That's not the point, Frank. I wanted to look around her apartment for more clues. <sighs> we'll just have to continue the investigation without her. Let's go back to the laundry room. Uh-oh. What is it? It's your parents. They want us both to come back to your apartment ASAP. Can you text my dad and say we'll be there in a few minutes? He's usually pretty cool when I'm on a case. Uh, I don't think that will work. Your mom is sending frowny face emojis. <sighs> That's not good. We've got to go back. What did you do now, Opal Watson? Nothing. You know how my mom is. Always worried. Then maybe I should text Mimi Augustine. She always stands up for us. Good idea. I don't think we're in trouble, but it never hurts to have your grandmother in your corner. There you two are. Opal, we were texting you. Why didn't you answer your phone? Uh, my phone kind of broke. What do you mean, kind of broke? Opal, you know you can't be without a phone. We need to be able to reach you. And are you limping? What happened to your leg? I just bumped my knee. It's no big deal. What do you mean, no big deal? What happened? Okay, okay. We'll talk about this later. The reason I wanted you and Frank to come back is to introduce you two to Mr. Vincent, an old friend of Grandma Augustine's from New Orleans. Friend is a strong word. Neighbors more like it. Mr. Vincent's family lived a few doors down from us. Mm -hmm. In any case, we wanted you to have a chance to meet him. But not a lot of the old timers left. We were hoping he and your grandma might tell you kids some stories about their days down south so you could learn something about our family's history. I'm sure Mr. Vincennes has better things to do than sit around and shoot the breeze. Augustine's right. I best be getting on my way now. Still have some unpacking to do. I just moved into the building with my son and his family, so there'll be plenty of time for reminiscing. Looks like we're neighbors again, huh, Augustine? Well, don't expect me to roll out the welcome wagon. Mom, that's rude. That's quite all right. Augustine's not one to hold a tongue. She's entitled to her opinion. Very nice to meet you, Miss Opal, Mr. Frank. Ooh, your hands are freezing. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Nothing I haven't heard before. Folks say cold blood runs in my family. Uh, you can say that again. Well, it was nice meeting you, Mr. Vincennes. We've got to go. Where are you two off to now? We're still on a case. Well, the case can wait. It's lunchtime, honey. You a spy, Opal? More like a detective. I always thought being a detective would be an interesting job. But then again, you have to be careful. You never know what you'll find out about people. Some secrets are best not revealed. I'll, uh, keep that in mind. Nice meeting you. Well, that was a blast from the past. Must have been nice seeing someone from back home, huh, Augustine? 
Depends on how you define nice. Far as I'm concerned, Albert Vincennes could have kept his old crusty self back in New Orleans. Ooh, the past is the past for a reason. Well, lunch will be on the table in five minutes. Though I can't say I feel much like eating. That man's visit took my appetite. Just showing up like that. That went well, huh? Hey, let's go get the coffee cups and dishes from the living room. Give your mom a minute to calm down. It's best to stay out of her way when she's angry and in the kitchen. You're right. Mom can be temperamental. Whoa, that was strange. What's up with Mimi Augustine? Seems like she was acting kind of mean to Mr. Vincennes, and she's not mean to anyone. I guess she really doesn't like the guy. And did you see his teeth when he smiled at Mimi Augustine? They were all yellow. Ooh, and his hands were like icicles. This day's getting weirder by the minute. Lunch! Frank, will you be joining us? Uh, sorry, Mimi Augustine. Egg salad is not my thing. Even though yours is great, I'm sure. Besides, I have to go home to get ready for Jeremy Baker's birthday party. Jeremy said he invited you, Opal, but you never replied. Uh, I guess I forgot. Besides, I have too much to do on my case. Okie dokie. I'll catch you later then. Bye, Bye Frank. Frank. You know, the birthday party sounds like it could be fun. Sure you don't want to go? I can drive you. No, I'm sure. Okay, but since you're sticking around, how about you help me wash these dishes? Hmm, still limping, huh? So are you finally going to tell me what really happened with that knee? Frank and I were on a case, looking for Miss Sadie's cat in the basement. The lights went out suddenly, and I couldn't see anything. I tripped and I hit my knee when I was hmm. getting up. Well, things like that happen to the best detectives. But remember what the eye doctor said about how it can be more difficult for you to see things in dark places. You know, like that last basement step. How did you... <laughs> Please, come on. You think I don't know my baby girl? Look, I want you to keep doing your detective work, Opal. I do. You're great at it. All I'm saying is we need to make a plan so that we're prepared for unexpected moments like today. Deal? Okay, deal. All right, cool. Hey, heads up! Hey, no fair. Take that! <laughs> oh, you got me good. Okay, I surrender. I surrender. <laughs> now let's wipe up this water. You know how your grandma is about keeping her kitchen clean. And when we're done here, how about we crack open that Sherlock Holmes novel we checked out of the library? It's your turn to read a chapter. I kind of want to go to my room and hang out for a bit. Make a few notes on my case. Maybe later? Sure thing, baby girl. What could that be? Baby, what are you doing on my balcony? I just dropped you off at home. Oh, come here, girl. You know I have to take you back, right? Miss Sadie will be worried. Okay, I guess it wouldn't hurt to sit outside for a minute. But then I have to take you back. Bibi, how did you know that this balcony is my favorite place? It's like my own secret hideaway, where I can be by myself and think. Out here, I can hear all these stories swirling everywhere. Hear that car horn beeping? One, two, three? That's Mrs. Rodriguez's oldest son, Hector, coming to so take her to work. To and hear that and voice going, going a mile a minute? I'm ho stop talking. That's I'm talking. Mrs. Rodriguez I'm yelling at Hector talking. because he's 10 minutes late. And there's the 1.42 p.m. L train headed downtown. And there's a... <coughs> Baby, stop struggling so much. <coughs> Be careful! Don't get so close to the railing! I got you. You're safe. What got you so excited, girl? Did you see something? Let me take a look. I see a couple of neighbors talking in front of the building, but nothing unusual. Hey, y'all! That sounds like Miss Sadie, and that looks like her ponytail. It is Miss Sadie. Where is she off to in such a hurry? 
Yeah, it's me. Shh. I think that's creepy Mr. Vincennes. He's standing right below the balcony, and I don't want him to know we're here. Let me just listen for a minute. Mm, just saw her leave, ponytail, knowing a southern accent. Of course I'm sure it's her. Nah, she's too far gone now. But rest assured, I'll catch her soon. I got plenty of time. Phew, he's gone. What was that all about? First, we found you in the janitor's closet of all places. Then, I discovered the broken lock. Then, creepy Mr. Vincennes shows up out of nowhere. And now you suddenly appear on my balcony, BB. What's your story, Kitty? It's okay. That's the thing about mysteries. They often have more questions than answers. But I'll get to the bottom of all of it. I always do. I'm Opal Watson, Private Eye. Want to hear more? Subscribe to Pinna to listen to all the episodes, plus a ton of other awesome podcasts, audiobooks, and more. With content added daily, there is always something new to discover. Go to Pinna.fm. That's P-I-N-N-A dot F-M to start a free trial today.